Outlook for next year. I think it's going to be quite a bit better than last year. I think the U.S. will have a tough time, but Asia is going to do better. You've got China reopening. We've got some reflation from the mm. policymakers in Beijing. I think that earnings in Asia will be much more robust than the U.S. Investors are getting worried about earnings in the U.S., but I think in Asia they'll be quite resilient with some pockets of genuine strength. But I want to just get your view here, Dan. Did people, are people getting too optimistic, particularly in the U.S., about earnings going into the first quarter? Mm. Well, I think if we're talking about U.S. earnings, yes. You haven't had very much in the way of earnings cuts so far. Uh, and typically in an environment like at the present, when you've got a sh pretty sharp slowdown, you see earnings cuts of something like 20% or more, whereas we've only seen about 4 or 5% in cuts. Asia, I think, is much more advanced in this process. And I think that there's much less downside going forward as far as sh street forecasts are concerned. Dan, I want to ask you about, well, I think in one part, really a China-U.S. question, but it's also a tech question. December has really seen the Nasdaq fall substantially. The, the counterpart, the China tech story, the long one, has, has done very, very well. Do you think the long China short U.S., do you think that, that, that trend continues at least over the short term? Yeah, I think it does. And really, there's no fundamental reason why Chinese soft tech names should be coupled with U.S tech names. They're separate economies, separate dynamics. You've got regulatory issues in both places, and you've got economies that are somewhat decoupled. The U.S. going into a slowdown, whereas China is probably bottoming out. So these, these two sectors don't need to be moving in tandem. Dan, I mean, so if you take this view and you think that uh, Asia is going to be uh, the, the destination for uh, a lot of flows. Uh, and looking at China in particular, talking to a couple of uh, sales traders of late, they're suggesting there's a lot of interest in China now, but there's not that much uh, of them really, uh, I guess, uh, walking the line, as it were. I think there's still quite a bit of skepticism about how long this rally can last in China. Uh, there are structural headwinds that China faces. We're not sure how strong the policy support will be for the economy, but the key is really that the valuations are still very low. Even after the rally we've seen over the past month, Chinese multiples are cheap relative to their own history, relative to peers.